Let's kneel before our God who, above all, thought of us. Father, when we think about our lives, we don't feel worthy of, of what you and, and all of heaven have done for us. Jesus, we, we don't deserve your blood and your sacrifice. Um, but you have called us even before we could call out to you. You've chosen us. And this morning our hearts simply say, Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We again accept your gift and we rejoice in it. Thank you for the gift of singing and playing and, and the gift of being together on this beautiful Sabbath day. We pray for those not able to be here or those celebrating graduations elsewhere. Uh, be with them, bless them, and bring them back again safely. We pray for our uh, head elder, Harold Barnett having some uh, heart challenges, uh, doing okay, but getting checked out at the hospital today. Um, help them to get uh, to the bottom of what's causing his, his challenges, and, and um, may he be able to go home soon. Um, Father, we thank you that uh, we live in a nation where we can get medical care uh, quickly when we need it. Um, we have so many blessings here. But yet we know that there are many challenges and many needs. And Father, I pray that you will use us to be a blessing uh, to those in need. Whether they're here in this church this morning or in our neighborhood or in our place of work, we want to be used to be a blessing wherever we go. So Father, open our hearts and minds as we open your word today. Give us joy. Give us peace. And we ask this not in our name, but in the name of Jesus. Amen. Many of you know it already, but if you ever have something on your heart you want to pray about, um, every week when there's not a potluck, which is the first, third, and usually fifth Sabbath, if there is one, there's a prayer group that meets right in this room up here, right after church. So if you've got something on your heart, whether it be joy or a burden you're carrying, there's a group that wants to pray with you, and we invite you to participate in that. Well, it was announced earlier and mentioned that this is the season of graduations. And I'm curious this morning, did anyone here graduate in the last couple of weeks or are, are you about to graduate? Just raise your hand if you graduated or are about to. All right, congratulations. I, I was at a couple graduations this week and I saw some of you graduate. But let's just give a round of applause to all of our graduates. We want to celebrate what you've accomplished. Uh, now let me ask this. Has anyone been to a graduation recently? Raise your hand if you've been to one graduation. Uh, keep your hands up if you've been to two graduations recently. Okay, there's still some hands. Now counting tomorrow, Will you have gone to three graduations? Okay, we're, we're, <laughs> there's a hand here and I'm raising a hand too. Uh, it is the season of graduating. Now what does it mean when you graduate? What does it mean when you've graduated? Does that mean you still have to stay at the same school and take the same classes that you took before? You're unsure. Okay, Russell, you got it. You move on, right? <laughs> Some of us didn't graduate, so we're not sure what graduation means, right? <laughs> and that's okay. God loves us whether we have a lot of education 
or none at all. Um, one of the founders of our church only went through third grade, uh, and her books have been some of the most translated of any other author in the world. Uh, graduating, I really know, it's, you're just being shy this morning. Graduating is when you move on. You're done with those classes. You can close up that math textbook. You finished. You passed. Jaden, saying no. Got summer school. Got, got to get ready for the next year. Uh, graduating, it typically is a transition away from that grade or away from that school, and you're ready for the next phase in and what, is it, what are you called when, you are no, when you're a graduate? You're now part of the blank of that school. Alumni. You're now an alumnus of that school. Uh, next year, I've got my 20-year reunion from high school. Uh, some of you are thinking, well, he's really young. Uh, <laughs> right? Uh, 20 years. I'm an alumni of my school. Does that mean that I'm still attending that school? Am I still going to Walla Walla Valley Academy? No, I am no longer attending. Although sometimes I have this recurring nightmare that I'm in a math class that I forget to go to and it's the end of the semester. Do any of you have dreams like that ever? I think I feel deficient in math in some way, even though I got all the math I needed and Hardly had to use it, right? Math is very important. Uh, but for my job, you just got to know 70 times 7. And let's see, 2,300 times 1, because it's going from day to year. I don't need a lot of math in my job. <laughs> now, we do need math working on the church budget. Um, and we've got a good finance committee and people that are smarter than me that are on that committee. But as I was thinking about graduations and being part of an alumni association, uh, inadvertently, I realized as Christians, really there's no such thing as a spiritual alumni. Uh, we aren't part of God's spiritual alumni because that would imply that we've graduated from the school of discipleship. We've We've learned all there is to learn, and we've grown in as many ways as one can possibly grow, and we're done. Well, I don't need to learn about loving my neighbor anymore. I'm done with that. I've moved on. Thank goodness. We're part of a lifelong journey, and actually, as we'll find out, a journey that lasts an eternity, but not in a bad way. Not in the way of thinking like, oh no, I'm enrolled in school and school lasts forever. Uh, discipleship is not a, a checking off the box, box sort of thing. It's not a one and done sort of scenario. Discipleship is a way of living. And as I was thinking about it, the Bible actually makes this really clear. And so I'm not going to talk for forever to, this morning, but I want to show you a number of Bible verses that will make it very, very clear. God wants continued growth in your lives. Do you believe that? Do you think God wants you to continue to grow and continue to learn? Well, not everybody said yes, so I guess I need to preach the sermon, okay? You didn't realize you could have gotten off that easily <laughs> by simply saying yes. <laughs> in truth, I probably still would have preached the sermon. It's, I want you to see the weight of it from the scriptures. Now, one of the most common metaphors in the Bible for us is living, being, uh, living things like trees or plants. Think about all the parables Jesus told. The ones that talked about his people, largely it involved us as living things or things that could produce living things. But it didn't just start with Jesus. I'm going to I'm going to help you out this morning and put the verses on the screen. But you're welcome to still look them up or write them down and look them up later. I want to put a verse on the screen here. I had to trim down my list of verses because there were just too many texts that talked about this. But check this out. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8. 
What does it say there? It says, blessed is the man or woman who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a what? A tree planted where? By water. So this is a tree that's going to grow and do well. A tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its what? Its roots. It's a tree that is going to grow, and it will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be what? Green. Evidence of what? Life. Growth. Etc. And it will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease bearing fruit. So a righteous person, a person who wants to follow God, is compared to a tree that's growing. In a good situation where it can grow and where it can thrive. Something I've observed about trees is they, they try to grow as long as they're alive. They try to keep growing. Maybe you've been in the woods and seen trees that have fallen down, but that still has some roots going into the ground, and there are new shoots that are growing vertically because a tree, as long as it's alive, it tries to grow. And if we're compared to trees, what should that tell us about us? If you're breathing, you should be trying to grow in some way. It's not just Jeremiah who said it. Look at what the psalmist said. Had to say Psalm 92 12 to 14 the righteous shall flourish like a what like a palm tree a new type of tree he shall grow like a what a cedar in Lebanon those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God they shall still bear fruit in what oh say that one more time they shall still bear fruit when old age it's not just the young saplings that get to bear fruit it's all of God's people can bear fruit of some form or another. There's lots of fruits that God wants us to bear. What are some of the fruits that God expects and invites us to grow? Well, there's the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Does God want us to grow in self-control? and love, and gentleness as we get older? Or does he want us to get more soured, and more bitter, and less loving, and less, more impulsive? No. He wants us to grow. And what about the spiritual fruitage of making disciples? It's not just the young, it's not just the middle age, it's not just the old. God can work in any of us to produce what did Jesus say? John 15, he said, I am the boulder, you are the rocks. Is that what it says? Rocks aren't alive. And so Jesus didn't choose a rock for this metaphor. He said, I am the vine, you are the what? Branches, if you stay connected to me, what will happen? You will bear fruit. In fact, what does the Bible say? It's not just Fruit, there's a word before fruit. Much fruit. So if we're a Christian, that means we're wanting to follow Jesus and we're staying connected to Jesus. And by Jesus' own words, if we're connected to him, what will we bear? Much fruit. So if there isn't something growing in our life, what might that indicate about our connection? For those of you that have wireless internet, You've maybe seen the thing on your computer which says limited connectivity uh, or connection lost. If we are connected to heaven, Jesus is flowing and pouring his spirit into our lives, something's going to grow. Growth isn't overnight, usually. But growth happens. It happens in our lives. Uh, so it's interesting. He didn't choose inanimate objects like rocks that don't grow. He chose things that do grow. But by the way, what's one of the common symbols God has for himself in the Bible? He called himself a rock. You see that all throughout the Psalms uh, and other places in the Bible. Why? Well, there's stability, there's strength there. And thinking along the growth mindset, Rocks, like, well, God doesn't need to grow, does he? He doesn't need to learn anymore. He knows everything. 
He can't become any more loving than he is. He, he's maximally loving. And so God is our rock. Jesus is the foundation. Now, Peter was a little pebble, uh, but God wanted Peter to grow also. It wasn't just um, in these symbols that we see this idea of, of continual growth being needed. Paul knew about the importance of growth. And there are a lot of verses, but I only picked two from Paul's writings. Check this out. This is from the, the book Philippians, which Paul actually went to twice. He went to uh, the town of Philippi on his first, or second missionary journey, and he visited them again on his third missionary journey. And later from Rome, while he's in prison, he's writing letters to the churches to encourage them. And he wrote a letter to the church at Philippi. And this is what he said, chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may diminish year after year. You passed the test, but you didn't graduate. <laughs> your love may abound. That means overflow, increase, grow, still more and more in knowledge and in all discernment. Paul said, keep on loving and grow more in your love. What about later on in Philippians? Paul said, not that I have already attained. I haven't graduated, he said, or am already perfected. He didn't view himself in that way. But he said, I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Jesus Christ has also laid hold of me. I'm moving forward. I got to keep growing because I haven't crossed the finish line. I'm not an alumni. I'm not a graduate. I'm a student in the school of Jesus' discipleship. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those which are ahead. He said, I'm pressing forward. I'm moving forward to the things which are ahead. Paul was a man of faith. But he said, God's not done with me yet. I can't be complacent yet. I got to keep growing and learning. I want to keep growing and learning. Notice what he said. I press on toward what? Toward the goal. For the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many of us as are mature. Notice maturity doesn't mean you got to stop growing. Maturity means you understand you need to keep growing. Have this mind. And if there's anything that you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. The metaphors of the Bible say, you're green, you're growing, keep on growing. The Apostle Paul, with all his experience and wisdom, he said, keep on growing growing. You're not a spiritual alumnus. You're not a part of the alumni association of the school of discipleship. You know, I was getting my hair cut at the local uh, barber college here this week. Um, while I was there, I was chatting with the guy who cut my hair. Someone different cuts my hair every single time. Uh, and it all turns out good enough. Uh, and, and it's five dollars. So I love it. And you get to have interesting conversations with people while you're in the chair. It's a witnessing opportunity. I gave him some glow after I left. A little tip. You don't have to pay the guy because he's a student, uh, but they love it. You give a little tip, a little glow, it's a great opportunity to witness. But as I sat in his chair, uh, I like to kind of figure out how far along in the program are they? You know, should I be nervous? Like, is this their first haircut or are they about to graduate? Um, and you can pay extra if you want to get what they call a senior, somebody who's almost ready to graduate. But anyways, I was talking to him, and he said, yeah, I actually already cut hair before coming to school. And I was thinking, all right. That means he definitely has experience. Uh, but he said, you know what? When I came to the school, I thought I knew pretty much everything. I knew how to cut hair. It's just hair. You know, what more do you need to learn with a haircut? But when he got to the school, he realized there is so much more I can learn. There's so many other styles and techniques and methods and details that I didn't know about that he thought he knew about before. 
I wonder if we ever fall into the same trap as Christians. Well, I've heard the gospel preached. Yeah, talk about something else, pastor. I already know the good news. Nobody said that to me. But I wonder if we feel it sometimes. Yeah, 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 I've read the Bible through. I did that when I was 12 in Pathfinders. I'm good. I was at a school one time years ago uh, offering Bible studies to the students, and a, a kid said to me, nah, I'm good. I'm good. He didn't understand the growth mindset. We can be content and at peace and assured of our salvation, but understand God's not finished with me yet. God's not finished with me yet. And so I wonder if we forget that sometimes. Yeah, 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 I've been to a prophecy seminar. I know about what the future will hold. Maybe there are more details that we can learn. Um, do you know it well enough to share it with somebody else? And are you sharing it with someone else? Because really, that's, that's the goal. Not for us just to pat ourselves on the back. Well, you got that one down. Daniel 2, check. You will learn Daniel too much better if you share it with somebody else. And it will become exciting again and fresh if you do. So the Bible tells us, keep on growing. Not only does Paul say it, not only do the illustrations and metaphors about trees and plants and vines tell us we need to keep growing, the Apostle Peter recognized our need to grow as well. Check this out. 1 Peter and by 1 Peter, I actually mean 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, what? Now we could say, hey, I've got faith, I'm done. I've got faith, this is great, I can relax. Peter says, good, you have faith, now what you need is you need virtue. You need to live a virtuous life. And then what next? Well, you get virtue, I'm done, I've graduated. Peter said, uh-uh, you need to get more knowledge, right? Uh, they call this Peter's ladder. Now, it's not that you have to go sequentially like, okay, this is my first priority, I must get faith, and then until I get faith, I can't get knowledge. No, no, no. Uh, but Peter was saying, you got to keep growing. Notice what he says, add to virtue knowledge. To knowledge, you got to get more self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, what? Godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. Keep on growing. He says, for if these things are yours and what? What's that A word again? Abound. If they're yours and they keep on growing and multiplying in your life, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have faith? Keep growing. Move on to virtue while continuing to grow in your faith. Notice what he said there in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But what? What's that word there? But blank? Grow. Thank you. I must not be asking. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing you off here. But grow in what? In the grace and what? The knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Keep growing. Are you just starting off as a Christian? Keep growing. Have you been around forever and you're a a 14th generation Christian, keep growing. No alumni in the school of discipleship, keep on growing. In fact, Jesus wanted us to have such a hunger for growth, he said this in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, blessed are those who what? Hunger and what? And thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Are you content? with your level of righteousness? I hope not. I hope that we have a hunger 
to be more like Jesus. Now again, not being content doesn't mean that we feel like we're not saved. We can have assurance right now in Jesus, even as we understand that Jesus, in a saved condition, he's saying to us, keep on growing. Keep on becoming more like me. I want to share two quotations with you uh, before we wrap it up this morning. You know, it's not just the great writers of the Bible. It's not just these great um, illustrations and metaphors that teach us that we need to continue to grow. Even one of our founders, who I mentioned earlier, Ellen White herself, recognized the importance of us continuing to grow. Notice here what we see. Heaven is a what? Now, all, take all the negative associations you have with school and throw it away because that's not was it, what was intended here. Amen? You're like, well, if it's a school, I don't want to go. Not at all what she intended. Heaven is a school. It's field of study what? The universe. Think about that. What prohibits us from studying the universe right now? Access. Right? Okay, uh, technology, too busy, fear of death. Right? All of those things. When we get to heaven, we're going to keep on learning. And we're going to get to learn about the universe. These things that, that Hubble and, and, it's, uh, and, and the telescope after it, Kepler, is that the name of it? Our viewing, we're going to get to go see them in person if we want to. You're like, oh, that's what this looks like. It was nothing like that in the picture. This is way better. It's teacher, the infinite one. God as our teacher in eternity, learning so many amazing things. A branch of this school was established in Eden. It was a charter school in the Garden of Eden. And the plan of redemption now accomplished, education will again be taken up in the Eden School. When Eden is restored in heaven, boy, it's back to school, but not in any sort of negative way. This is going to be the best learning you have ever experienced. Some of us would love to do deep studies into topics, but we just don't have the time or resources or opportunity. Heaven, you got all the time, all the resources, and all the opportunity to study whatever God has created and, and, and placed in your heart. But it's not just the universe and, and those sorts of things that we'll be studying. As I share this last quote, and it's a long one, but, but hang with me. Um, this, is, this is amazing. It says, all the paternal love, the fatherly love, which has come down from generation to generation, through the channel of human hearts, all the springs of tenderness which have opened in the souls of men are but as a tiny rill, that means a tiny little stream, to the boundless ocean. So compare a, a teeny little trickle of water, uh, like our fountain out there, it has a little bit of water in the basin. Uh, that compared to the ocean is, is the, the metaphor here, or the comparison. Uh, boundless ocean, when compared with the infinite, exhaustless love of God. Our understanding of God's love is just a tiny little drop compared to the ocean. In heaven, we are going to understand it so much more. Tongue cannot utter it. Pen cannot portray it. You can meditate upon it every day of your life. You may search the scriptures diligently in order to understand it. You may summon every power and capability that God has given you in the endeavor to comprehend the love and compassion of the Heavenly Father. Yet there is an infinity beyond. Before Toy Story used the phrase to infinity and beyond, Ellen White had penned it. But it was talking about the love of God for us. That means when we get to heaven, throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity, in all the joys and amazing things of heaven, 
we're going to be learning more and more of God's love, but we'll never fully understand it because it's that deep. You may study that love for ages, yet you can never fully comprehend the length and breadth, the depth and the height of the love that God of God in giving his son to die for the world. Eternity itself can never fully reveal it. Last slide. Yet as we study the Bible and meditate upon the life of Christ and the plan of redemption, these great themes will open to our understanding more and more. In another place, she says, this will be the science and song of eternity, of the redeemed, studying out the love of God for us. But we can continue that study here. As we spend time day by day in God's word, as we spend time talking to him, as we spend time serving him, learning more about his will and his word, we can learn more uh, that will prepare us for our study in the future. I can imagine someday in heaven, um, after Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit and, and the Bible authors have spent time explaining to us uh, the stuff that we didn't understand in the Bible, or the stuff we thought we understood but really didn't understand. There may theoretically be a time when we can say, yes, I understand everything that's in this book, at least intellectually. We may have every question answered. Paul, why did you say it like this? What did you mean by this Greek word versus that one? And he'll say, well, this is, and then the Holy Spirit, yeah, that's exactly what I intended. Uh, or this is, uh, this is the message I was communicating. Okay, I, I've got it. But according to what we just saw, we might intellectually understand concepts, but forever and ever we're going to be understanding more and more the love that God has for us. As much as you know, there's a lot more to know. As much as you've grown in your character, there's more growth that God has for you. As much fruit as you have borne in your life, God has more fruit for you to bear in him. No spiritual alumni, only continual growth and learning in the school of Jesus. So what's the message this morning? Keep on growing. Keep on growing. You know what that looks like for you in your own life. You know the areas where the Holy Spirit, or, or you can pray about it this afternoon. God, where do you want me to grow right now. And then he can help bring to your mind your next step. What does that look like? If you're not spending time in the Word, that's a good place to start. A little bit every day uh, is a great place to start. Uh, joining a Sabbath school class, joining a small group, starting a small group, reading a book on a spiritual topic, um, finding ways to involve yourself in service, to understand experientially what it means to serve to love. There are so many opportunities. I'm going to leave that between you and the Holy Spirit. But this morning, simply by raising your hand, who wants to keep on growing? You want to keep growing? I do. And I know God does too. Father, we are thankful that you love us so much. And you love us uh, as we are, but you also want to help us become who you know we can be. So day by day, Lord, let us be satisfied with your love, but let us have a, a, a longing to reflect your love more. Show us in our own hearts and minds how specifically you want us to grow. Show us the practical steps we can take and give us joy as we do it and learn more of you and your character. This is our prayer. Let all God's growing saints say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Have a happy Sabbath. Fill out that survey for involvement. Turn that in, and we will see you very, very soon. Next week, we start a brand new sermon series on the kingdom of God. I'm excited for it, and I think you'll be blessed. God bless.